What's up everybody, it's Track Sounds back again and I got five drum tips to get instantly better drums for all my producers out there. I'm gonna do it in Logic X, but they work in any DAW you're thinking about. Comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff you hear all the time below. And let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna run through the five tips real quick before I go into them, just to give you a little overview. First tip, pitching your drums. Pitching them up, pitching them down, hi-hat, snares, everything in between. I'll go and talk about that, why you would do that, when, and what I like to do with it. Second tip, which goes hand in hand with the first one, is tuning your drums. I'm gonna show you how to use a free plugin. Did somebody say free? Free plugin to tune your drums and make sure that they're in the right key of your track and what you're kind of doing with it. Third tip is making your own loops. I'm going to explain that, why you would do that. Um, and when I say making your own loops, I don't necessarily mean making them to put them out and sell them like that. I'm talking about doing really cool hi-hats or something on a track, bouncing them down, using them in other tracks. I'll explain it, why you should do that and what are some good times to. Fourth is parallel compression. And I'm not going to try to overwhelm anybody with it, especially for the, you know, this is probably more of a beginner style tips. Um, so I'll explain parallel compression, why I would use it with my drums and things like that, but I don't want to over compress and I don't want you to over compress, especially if you don't understand what basic compression is. Check it out. It would be very helpful. And my fifth tip is going to be saturation, using it on a mix bus. There's a specific, that's a tough word to say sometimes, specific plugin I like to use from Slate Digital that will help with any of your saturation mixes, the virtual tape machines, what it's called, and we'll go into that. So let's go ahead and rock into this and see what we can get going. So I got a beat I was working on here. Um, with my boy Blake is R&B beat kind of stuff. idea of it pretty cool little vibe so first tip I'll go into I'm using Geist on my drums if you're in Logic Pro and you're not using Geist or some other dope drum VST um, and you're using the Ultra Beat or EXS or the EX24 whatever it's called um, yeah don't do that use Geist or something else I promise so on my bouncing snares in between my, you know, you have your main snare on the downbeat. I like pitching up on my main, my bouncing snares, making sure, making them a little higher pitch than the regular sound, just cause I think it's a little more interesting, adds a little more bounce and I like pitching down my, on this one, I, you know, if I'm layering snares, I like to pitch one of them down this one I was just, I lowered just a little bit, I think to get closer into the key maybe I was wanting. Um, but I, 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 I'm not, if you have one snare, you don't always have to pitch it down, but it definitely adds some ump to your tracks and gives it a little different knock than you're even expecting um, sometimes. So I would look into that and I'll show you how I use Voxingo Span and I'll put a link to it down below. Um, this is the free, this is my second tip. This is the free plugin I use to tune my drums. And you can put this on your kick, your hi-hat, um, whatever. It's, it's very, it's a dope plugin all around. It's a spectrum analysis, really cool plugin. So I'll show you how to use it on this. So I put hold on it right when it was clicking on the bouncing snare. I'll use that for my example. And I went to the highest peak and it says it's at G8 to so G. Um, and I'm in A minor. So let's see. So, you know, G isn't bad. You could pitch it up another uh, semitone if you wanted uh, or another whole, whole step, two semitones to get to the A if you wanted to but I'm not mad at it being there personally. I'm sure there's probably some music theorists that would, you know, I'm not, I didn't study music theory in college or, you know, anything like that. It's all just kind of what I'm learning as I go. So we'll pitch it up. So 
So, you know, it's a little higher pitch. But I'm not mad at it. So we'll use that alone for now. And I'll, you know, I'll show you how to do it on the, let's see. Let's do it on the deeper snare and see how we're going. Boom. B. So that one too. It's in it's in it's in the key of A minor. Um, I could lower it down again another um, whole step, which would be two semitones, and get it to that you know get it to A if I really want it. It doesn't have to be an A. Um, just usually the one, three, and five are some of the more consistent notes. You know. See now the A is the highest peak. So. That's my second tip. Third tip I'll get into is making loops, um, in which you know this like this isn't some profound tip that I'm giving. It's more of I'm saying this. So I remember I got in the studio uh, in LA one time with some people, and they were making this is a while back, and then they were making beats just hella fast. And I asked one of the guys, I'm like, man, what do you like? Man, your drum, you just make knocking out drums like crazy. He's like, oh, I make my own loops and just save them on the side. And I've never, and you know, and this is a while back, and you know, obviously there's so much access to sounds now, but a lot of people take, you know, pride in some of their own stuff, and they really like some of their own grooves and things like that, especially with hi hats and stuff. I'm kind of particular about them, but so I have this hi hat pattern here. Used Effectors on it's one of my favorite plugins. I got the open hat going. You know, I could bounce this down, save this loop at 90 BPM, and then bring this up into another beat at some point soon, or say I'm working with somebody in person, I need to make quick beats, do get up my, a lot of my own loops, and have my own set of my own drum packs just sitting there of maybe certain grooves or certain tempos I like. And then I can just bring these into different beats all day and use, I make so many beats, and I'm sure you're probably the same a lot of them are never going to see the light of day besides, you know, maybe you put all of them on your store. If, you know, if somebody, you know, I wouldn't use the same hi-hat pattern in every single beat, but there's, you know, I'll use some in certain beats and then reuse the same type of drums in certain ones, especially if I really like the beat or it's something that I just have, you know, I get good feedback on or something like that. Don't be afraid to do that because a lot of the beats you make are probably never even going to see the light of day or anybody really even be on them. And so, you know, and then this is one of those things, you can change them up, vary them a little bit, add different effects, different, like I use effect tricks. I could add effect tricks on any loop and make it sound totally different than I started, but it still have the same groove. And you're just, you'll make beats quicker, you know, and, and they'll still be high quality. It'll be stuff that you like too. So um, I'll go into my fourth tip, which was parallel compression with using on your drum bus. So what I do here is I'm in Logic, I'll select all my drums here and I'll send them to one bus. I send them here to bus one, boom, send them over. And I'll let me mute these real quick. So I have them here on my drum. I can, I can mark this drum bus I hadn't done. I was kind of lazy. Um, this is my bus one. And what you can do is you make another bus go in here, bus two, boom. And you can turn this to bus one. So now, I already had this there, so I'll just, uh, I'll, you know, I'll change that to no input. So what I did here is, and I have two bus ones basically coming in, this is my lead one, this is bust out of it. I put SSL channel plug-in on it, and I have it lowered, you know, way down, tucked in. And so then I smack, this is my, you know, second plug-in, or my second bus. I brought the ratio all the way up, brought the threshold all the way up, Put the um, attack and release all the way down. Make sure I had a fast attack. I added a little high end um, to it, just because you lose some of it. I added a little low end too at the bottom, just because you lose quite a bit of it when you parallel compress, and you still want those um, with your drums. I'm saying um right there a lot. Overthinking it maybe. <laughs> So let me move, let me mute the instruments. Or let me just solo the drums. I could have done that way quicker than we feel maybe. So.
bring it up. I wouldn't bring it up that high. I was just kind of showing you, you know, overextending the dynamics of it. So I can kind of tuck it in wherever I want. I just leave it, you know, kind of at the bottom. But this just adds way more dynamics to the drums, adds more punch to them. There's, there's a ton of videos out there on parallel compression and how to really use it. And so I don't, I don't want to, there's way better resources on it, I would say, that know far, far more than I do about the topic of specifically of that. And they'll probably be able to explain some things better. But just from my research and years of trying and error and being around, you know, engineers and things like that, this is one key that a lot of people use and it really adds that punch that you're looking for in your track fifth tip I'm going to go into, which kind of works hand in hand with that as well, to add more punch to your track, is once you you bust all your, and you can do this before the parallel compression as well, I, I just kind of did them a little out of order, but to each their own, so I have all my drums bust over here to the first one, I put on a Slate Digital plugin called I'll show two. I'll show two of them that I use. I was just going to show the virtual tape machine, which shows different. It kind of mimics analog tape from back in the day. Um, you have your different uh, different machine types. I like the FG9 on the tape type. I think it sounds a little better. 30 IPS works a little better on high stuff. Uh, yeah, and then you could you know I keep it on normal, and then you can kind of mess with it from here. It's, Sometimes even just having it on there adds that extra, the sat, it's very subtle, but when you add it, it it, it definitely, it, it's one of those things that all in combination, everything together, you're gonna get that punch you might be looking for in some of your tracks or just that extra bit. So I have it here. You know, I'll push it to it. There's all types of settings in here too. Um, you can go into the, the wow and flutter and, and different things like that. But you know, I'm not gonna go too far into it and overwhelm you with it because I just think it's a cool plugin you can add on to it. There's a ton of them out there. Anything that adds some saturation to it, that's uh, kind of in that analog feel right there, it will, be, it will be a great addition to it. Also, Slate Digital. I don't get paid by them or anything for this. I just really like their plugins. I add, uh, I'll put the virtual channel on there, won't even mess with it sometimes, just I like the extra bit. And then I might put a revival on there to add a little more thickness and shimmer to it, very subtle stuff. And then, yeah, that's basically some just quick tips I have for you. And I hope that you can get the use out of if you have any questions or anything like that, that you might wonder how I use something or you know, give me your, your feedback, or what you think. I. Could do better maybe with how i'm using them or something especially if you know further about them i just think these are some dope things that i've kind of picked up over the years that have helped me add some knock to my drums so i kind of wanted to share them um yeah till the next time i see y'all get it